So Parker, we've been working on this board for a long time. Yeah. Uh, the CI Pro and the Two Point Pro, it's been like a really rewarding process working on this board. I mean, I feel like my main goal in life as a shaper and designer is to make high performance boards. To me, it's like the hardest thing to do because those type of surfers like yourself are the most demanding. Um, the consequences are the biggest, you know, the tolerances are the smallest. So I spend like most of my mental energy around surfboards thinking about this type of board, super high performance. And so it's been fun to work on that with you. And I think what we want to do now is kind of lay out the difference between the CI Pro, which was the first iteration that we did together, and now the Two Point Pro. In your mind, like how do we get from the Pro to the Two Point Pro? Um, I think like we just wanted to slightly bring in a little bit more versatility to the board. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a, a point where we were, I was riding the pro and everything, and I was able to kind of take more drastic lines and steeper parts of the wave. But then when the wave would kind of flatten out, it would be a little bit limited on like what it could do. And because we, of so much rock, because of so much curve yeah. and yeah, I just, Curve is your friend until it's not, and then sometimes you just need to back off and have something just a little bit more tapered down to fit the curve of the wave that you're riding. Right. And so, and that doesn't necessarily mean on like big waves or small waves or whatever, it's just the the curvature of the wave when you're riding it. And a lot of the times waves are flatter. And yeah. so I wanted something that I could kind of have, be a little bit more versatile for conditions. And that was when we started to just drop and tweak a little bit. And it felt like where we landed, I can still ride it when the waves are bully, feels great. Right. I can still ride it when the waves feel flat, which is great. And I can ride it on a bigger wave, even if it's flatter. And I could ride it on a smaller wave when it's tight. So it kind of right. had just like major versatility and kind of opened up like a lot of doors. But I still think that there's like that moment in time when the waves are really steep, really curvy, that I'm gonna ride my more rocker version and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna jump on this. But the subtlety of differences is just, they're not major changes, so it's easy to jump from one. And I think right. ultimately they kind of complement each other well. And they can, you can kind of adapt to one in whatever the conditions are. But there might be one that's like maybe a tiny bit more finely tuned to yeah. the day that you're riding them. And ultimately, I just think that the board has a major sweet spot. You can kind of stand on it and turn from wherever. A big sweet spot. Big sweet yeah. spot. I think by lowering the 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 rocker just the little bit that we did, which was a quarter of an inch, yeah. I think when it was all said and done. It just made the board a little bit more evenly distributed, so mm. it felt like you could kind of turn with more ease um, kind of in flatter parts of the wave. Right. So it's kind of like a more accessible CI Pro. Yeah. The, the Two Point Pro is, which I think is rad because I think, you know, for a lot of surfers, the Pro might have been a little intimidating. For sure. It's just a highly rockered board, a lot of curve you know, wants that cuppy wave, whether that cuppy wave is waist high or double overhead, it needs that curve yeah. in the wave to fit in. And then also some surfers just don't know how to deal with that much rocker. Totally. So now the two point pro being lowered a quarter inch is more accessible to more people. For sure. And that's the only change in the board is we just brought the rocker down a little bit. Yeah. The contours are the same, the outline is the same, the rails are the same. And I think that is a cool thing uh, because it shows you how really small changes are huge in surfboards. Like massive. a quarter inch is like massive. Is a quarter inch, but it, it's sure. night and day in a surfboard. And the other thing that I think it teaches us, and this is cool for you and I, because we worked so long on this curve of the board, is that a good rocker curve is a good rocker curve. For sure. Right, like curve in a surfboard, that's the number one thing, mm -hmm. is how it bends from nose to tail. And it's cool to know that one could be, that if a good curve is a good curve, it could be really versatile and you just have a little less of the curve, a little more of the curve. But hydrodynamically speaking, how the water comes across the bottom of that thing works across a sort of wide range. Totally. So just thinking about this winning the um, Stab in the Dark with Italo, that was interesting. It goes back to what we were saying about a good curve is a good curve. Totally. Because last year it won with Jack Robinson. Same rocker, just more of it. And in Hawaii in a bunch of different waves. Mm -hmm. And now it wins with Italo, less rocker, um, 
different waves than sure. Hawaii, but still really cuppy, yeah. right, if you watch it. But I thought it was interesting that even Stab pointed out in um, the fourth episode, or one of the episodes with Itilo where they're talking about the CI, they're like, yeah, we knew, that we thought that the CI Pro would be good for Jack, but we were like, it's not going to work for Itilo because they had done that whole bit on how he surfs flatter and on top of the water. Mm -hmm. And what they said made sense to me, but I was pleasantly surprised to see, no, this curve actually works for a wide range of surfers because you can't get two different surfers, oh, man. two more different surfers it's crazy. than Robbo and Italo. That was, I mean, yeah, like for me, even just in theory, knowing that Jack was the one that was going to ride the board, I was like, all right, cool. We surf super different, but like we still probably, I surf more along the lines of the way that Jack surfs maybe right. than Italo. And so I kind of had a feeling that Jack was going to jive with the whole board and like just the aesthetic and the rail and everything because he's real carvy and accelerates and stuff. And Italo, I honestly had no clue. Like mm -hmm. I just, I feel like the way he surfs and the type of surfing that he does is so foreign to anything that I do in a good way. Like mm. he can just do stuff that I don't even know if many people in the whole world can do. Sure. But it translated to the board super well. And... I think for him, like in watching the footage, you could really tell that the direction change was just sharp and super quick. And I felt like for someone like him, of his speed and his caliber of like twisting and turning and rotating and just landing harsh and doing yeah. all that, dude, the board adapted really well. And was really forgiving. Super forgiving. Like yeah. he was able to land airs with kind of, you know, like in the middle of the board and then still being able to maneuver in and out of those places right. quick. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what comes down to this board and why it's so versatile is because the sweet spot's so big. Yeah. So no matter how like Jack is standing on the board and how he's carving, I mean, the sweet spot's so big, is gonna stand on the board in a completely different way and surf it completely different, but you can still maneuver from anywhere on the board. Yeah. And I think that's what's making it really translate from surfer to surfer so positively is the fact that the sweet spot's so big and it actually just kind of lets you turn from where you're comfortable turning from. Yeah. Not a right and wrong place. Yeah, right. It's just big so you can maneuver for what feels good for you and then that's why people are having success on it is because they're able to surf how they want to surf. Right, they don't have right. to change their surfing to the board. It's right. just kind of is a big enough sweet spot to yeah. where you can just start from your position. Yeah, and again, that tells us a good curve is a good curve. Totally. Right, and then I think the Jack and Italo juxtaposition is a great way to illustrate that the Two Point Pro doesn't replace the CI Pro. Mm -hmm. They're two different boards. For sure. For two different people or two different waves in the same person. Totally. You know what I'm saying? And it's important for all of us as students of surfboards, designers, surfers, everything, to realize, wow, a quarter of an inch change in rocker. Might as well be a mile. <laughs> yeah, is a, is a whole world. So two different boards, Yeah, but and covering I, a lot of range. And I think too, like as a surfer of any caliber, you're always trying to make the best decision for your equipment to match the waves on that day. Yeah. And that's where like the right. true subtleties of like surfing and how much right. you surf kind of comes out is like, can you match your ability to a board to the conditions? Yeah. And like when you have something that just is versatile, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. And I think that's kind of why we're all so happy with the way that this thing has gone because the decision making process is pretty easy because it just seems to mm -hmm. go. Right. And to be able to rock up and confidently have one board in your car and be like, yeah, cool, this is gonna work today. Or you know, if you have two and you're like, oh, today's a little bit bullier, I'm gonna ride my more rockery version. Yeah. Oh, today's a little bit flatter and looks like Maybe there's a little bit of lump and bump. I'm going to ride the flatter version, and that's going to help me surf better today. Right. And that's where I think, like, the fun part of these, like, tiny little quarter-inch tweaks that might as well be a mile yeah. can change your enjoyment of surfing yeah. on the given day. Yeah. And I think that was what was cool to, like, see the difference, you know? Well, good work on it, buddy. You too. Appreciate the partnership. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks, dude. <laughs>